Just pretend. Pretend? Me? But I'll have nothing to slide into when I hit a home run. You'll have nothing to hit if you don't let me pitch. Oh, all right, I'll pretend. <laughs> hey, you guys! Check this out! <laughs> oh. I just found out the coolest thing! Yoo-hoo! Yoo-hoo, Liz! Liz, come here! Dorothy Ann, not now! I'm one swing away from hitting my way into the record books! But you've got to see this! It'll change your lives! Whatever it is, it can't be more important than our baseball game! I just finished this book! A Child's Garden of Physics! Huh? <laughs> I'm really happy for you, D.A. We can't wait to hear the book report. But right now, I've got a game-winning home run. So if you could just get off the field... But, Ralphie, you don't understand. This book's all about what gets things moving and what makes them stop. Forces, friction, pushes, pulls. Forces? Friction? Pushes? Pulls? And as I always say, where there's physics, there's a field trip. Woohoo! <laughs> Listen, a force is just a push or a pull. If you're gonna force us to listen to this... You're being kind of pushy, don't you think? No, no. I'm talking about real forces. Picture this. There's this big red sled sitting in the snow, not going anywhere. But if somebody comes along and gives it a push... Who? It doesn't matter, Arnold. If somebody comes and... I need to know so I can complete my mental picture. Yeah, me too. Okay, okay. How about... Napoleon? Fine. If Napoleon comes along and gives the sled a push, it'll move. That's a force. And it'll keep moving on the slippery snow until something stops it. Like the entire British Army? No, like some dirt. Things rubbing together cause a force called friction. The sled stops because of the friction of the dirt against the runners. Friction slows down and stops nearly every motion on Earth. You stopped our game to tell us that? Isn't that cool? Let us know when they make the movie, okay, DA? <laughs> <laughs> Very funny, you guys. Well, I think friction is fascinating. Well, I think it's... Hey. Dorothy Ann, no, wait! You know, that book does sound sort of cool. It is! And look at this, Ralphie. Page 97. Hey. It's a baseball field. But it would be impossible to play normal baseball there. There's no friction. You know, Dorothy Ann, this is one amazing book. Flat, sturdy... White and the right size. Hmm. 
GDA, do you think maybe I could borrow it? Sure, but you have to promise to take care of it. The Scout's honor. You're up, Ralphie. Thanks, DA. All aboard! Now? But, but, Miss Frizzle, we're in the middle of the most important competition in the history of sports. Just a delay of game, Ralphie. Delay of game? What for? Field trip delay. It's time to explore the unknown. Be adventurous, brave, and bold. Let's go. Field trip. <laughs> Just as long as we don't get blasted, roasted, toasted, or eaten, I'm happy. Oh, don't worry, Arnold. That's not until next week. Today, we're going to a baseball game. All right! This is so cool. A baseball game? That's not new or different or exciting. What? Let's go someplace really unusual. Like that place I showed you, Ralphie. You know, page 97. Show them. Um, yeah. Well, uh... <laughs> Ralphie. How could you? Well, you know, it was the right size, and with the white cover and all, it made a great home plate. Hey, it's not like I ruined it. Please, Miss Frizzle, can we get my book before we go? No occasion for agitation, Dorothy Ann. We'll not only get your book, we'll keep Ralphie happy, too. We will? Mm-hmm. Bus, do your stuff! <laughs> Let me get the facts. Are we where I think we are? Yes! Yes, we are! At my old school, the librarian never let us drive in our books. Miss Frizzle, stop here, please. Page 97. It's the page I was talking about. It's all about a world without friction. It looks like the world of baseball to me. Come on. Ralphie, watch out. The ground on that field has no... Yeah, there's no stopping him now. Without friction, how are we going to stop him? What would happen if something smashed into him? Right. A force pushing the other way. But, but what can we use? The only forces we can control in there are... Us! Mm -hmm. Take me out of the friction where things just slow to a stop. La 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 This way, class. Something tells me I should have stayed home today. Who knew he'd wind up inside a drawing? I wonder what would happen if I tried to run. Whoa! <laughs> Not a good idea! Oh boy, is this ever weird. Hi! Friction. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> Forget walking. I just want to stand up. How about a forest to get you going, Dorothy Ann? Like a whoosh? <laughs> Whee! Never fear, Ralphie! A push to the rescue! <laughs> there! I saved you! Saved me? I was having a blast! Hey, D.A., looks like Ralphie gave you the push-off. <laughs> That's the last time.
time I save him. Phew, that was close. Look on the bright side, Arnold. No friction, no grass stains. Okay, hit it, Liz. Now what? Free baseball classic. And what a beautifully frictionless day it is. Miss Frizzle, where did you learn to announce like that? You'd be surprised what teachers do during the summer break. But let's talk about the game, DA. Oh, yes. Well, folks, believe it or not, we're coming to you live from inside my textbook. Our playing field today is slipperier than ice and slicker than spit. The ground out there has no, we repeat, no friction, folks. Yes, sirree, baseball fans. This could very well be this week's Game of the Century. On the mound is Wanda, one of the most outstanding pitchers in the class. And master of the famed bubblegum ball. You ready for this, Ralphie? Try me. First up is Ralphie, the most fearsome four-foot hitter in the league. And there's the pitch! Whoa! And look at that, folks. The force Wanda used really got that ball going and pushed her way back towards second. It's a swing! I got it! And a miss. Oh. Oh. Oops. Sorry, Miss Frizzle. Oh, and a serious catcher-teacher hip check. Uh, what's going on here? Another pitch. This one looks good. A hot grounder down the third baseline. For Dorothy Ann, what do you think has happened to our batter? Hey, this isn't fun. Oh, He's spinning off the first. Yes, yes, Ralphie is going for a double with a spin on it. Oh, dear. Just look at that ball. That's what happens when there's no friction from the ground to slow it down. Oops! Oh, look at Ralphie go! Oh, no. Double play. <laughs> okay. I'll play second. It's all yours. Coming through! Yet again, maybe I'll back him up in center. Look out, Keisha! <laughs> Yeah. Whee! All right. 
It's the all Frizzle Friction Free Tug of War! Then again, maybe not. Very good, Wanda. A push is one force that can get us moving. What's the opposite? A pull? A, A pull. pull! Excellent. This is more like it. Thanks, boss. Huh? Hey! Wait a sec. Where is everybody? <laughs> Rev on, you guys! <laughs> pull! 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 Wow, you were right, DA. We had no idea friction did so much. Dorothy Ann, could I borrow that book when Rafi's done with it? Uh, can I too? Then me! Wait a sec. No one gets the book until we get out of it. He's got a point. I guess so. To the bus! Is everyone seated? Yes, Miss Frizzle. Then let's book it. <laughs> uh oh, what's that noise? We only pressed flowers in our books. Any suggestions, class? Better got it, Miss Frizzle. Excellent idea, Wanda. Oh, no. The cover of the book is pushing down on the bus too hard for the wheels to push us out. Same page, please. Step on it, Liz! There's not enough friction down here to push the bus out! There's too much friction up here! Okay, okay, where do we stand? Uh, somewhere between page 96 and 97. Carlos! Hey, just trying to lighten things up. Lighten things up, that's it. Climb up on the roof and push up on the book. Let me get the facts. You're saying we should hold up the book, get in the bus, and drive away? Yes. How? Good question, Arnold. Anyone have an answer? DA, this is all your fault! Ralphie, you're a genius. Look, the letters peel off the page. I have a plan. We split into two teams, right? Right. Ralphie's team goes on the roof and pushes up on the book, while my team piles letters up under here to hold the book up. Long enough for us to get out. Like this. Exactly. Let's do it! Let her rip! Carlos, take a letter. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent plan. But why doesn't your team push up on the book while my team piles the letters, okay? Okay. Not okay! Yes, okay! Not! Yes, okay! Not! Um, DA, what is it again that makes everything stop? Friction! And if there's a lot of it, you can't get anywhere. Right, Ralphie? Yes? Well, I think there's a little too much friction between you two. So if we're ever going to get out of this book, we'd, we'd better, better get, get rid of the friction between us. us! Sorry. No, I'm sorry. Well, I'm even sorrier. No, I'm sorrier. No, I'm sorrier. <sighs> and I'm sorrier than both of you. Okay, let's try it. Push! Come on, you bunch!
bunch of Weasley Wimps push! It's working! Mm. More ladders! Out of the book and through the words, back to the class we go. La 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 Remember what happened last time you jumped out of the bus like that? Never fear! There's friction here! Good old friction! Hey there, friction fans! Welcome to the All Frizzle Complete with Friction Baseball Classic! Yes, sir! It's a beautiful day here at Frizzle Field, and have we got a game for you! The first up is our very own Dorothy Ann. I tell you, Keisha, if she hits the ball as hard as she hits the books, watch out! Oh, a tremendous hit deep into center. Holy cow, she exerted some kind of force on that ball. But can the left fielder Carlos get to the ball and apply his force to stop it? No, he can't. What a shot, folks. But lucky for Carlos, the friction of the ball against the grass has slowed it to a stop. What would we do without friction, folks? Yahoo! Come on, children! And D.A. finds a friend in friction as she slides home. The big question, is she safe or out? I don't know, Keisha. I can't make out the plate. That's funny. N neither can I. Where is it? I think it's over there. D.A. was right! This book is great! As I always say, Ralphie, never judge a book by its cover. <laughs> is this the magic school bus? Is this the magic school bus? Magic the magic school bus. You mean magic school bus? Magic school bus. Magic school bus. Magic school bus. I wonder where the magic school bus. Oh shit! I want the magic school bus. Hey Liz, another day, another. Caller? Now, who could that be? Hello, Magic School Bus producer speaking. Hi. You know that textbook, The Bus and the Kids Went Inside? Oh, wonderful book, isn't it? Yeah. I'd like to know where I can get a copy. So you can visit a world without friction? Right. I already checked the library. Where'd you look? In the non-friction section, of course. Well, actually, you can find non-friction anywhere. But here on Earth, I thought friction was the only game in town. It is, but you'd be surprised how many ways we can give friction the slip. You mean like sliding down a slide? Exactly. Very little friction, but lots of fun. Or playing shuffleboard? Oh, and of course. Ice skating! She shoots! She scores! Um, uh, uh, yes. Uh, snow skiing. And water skiing. Snow sledding, skateboarding. Oh, and don't forget, log rolling. Very non-frictional. So friction is all around us, but sometimes there's just less of it. Exactly. And sometimes a lack of friction can surprise you. Yes, I suppose it could surprise you. <laughs> Thanks. Non-friction is my favorite. Oh. Sometimes working on this show is stranger than friction.
Major funding for the Magic School Bus is provided by the National Science Foundation, supporting education and research in science, mathematics, and technology. And Microsoft Home supports the Magic School Bus and other programs that further learning, exploration, and discovery. Additional funding is provided by U.S. Department of Energy and Carnegie Corporation of New York. Visit your local library and read more about science in the Magic School Bus and other science books. Seatbelts, everyone! Please let this be a normal field trip with a friend. No way! Cruising on down Main Street, you're relaxed and feeling good. Next thing that you know, you see it. Octopus in the neighborhood. Surfing on the sound wave, swinging through the stars. Yeah. Take a look at your intestine. Pick your second right class mark on the magic school bus. Yeah. Navigator, that's true. Climb on the magic school bus. Make a plane to the two. Take that. On our magic school bus. Rock the river of love. <laughs> on the magic school bus. Such a fine thing to do. Oh. So strap your bones right to the sea. Come on in and don't be shy. Come on. Just to make your day complete. You might get baked into a pie on the magic school bus. Step inside, it's a wild ride. Come on, right on the magic school bus. Stroke. 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 You're looking good, Miss Frizzle. Stroke. Stroke. Come on, come on. Stroke. Yes. You're two seconds up on yesterday. Yay, team! Whoa! <laughs> Four more minutes, Miss Frizzle. Don't you think you better go easy on her, Ralphie? Can't. All great athletes have to train to build up their muscles. If Miss Frizzle wants to win the teacher athlon, she's got to have muscles. Whew, but muscles aren't everything, Ralphie. Wahoo! Woohoo! How does she do that? Miss Frizzle will need the strongest muscles she can get to stand a chance against that other teacher. Keisha's right. I heard Mr. Sinew's so big, even his muscles have muscles. How you feeling, Miss Frizzle? Oh, this has a fiddle, Tim. Wish I could say the same. Oh, my heart is pounding like crazy. Oh, as my vain old Aunt Artery used to say, without that pump, you're gonna slump. You're telling me. Keeping up with you is harder than I thought. I'm out of breath, too. I can't get enough air. And the same goes for the bus. Good idea, Liz. Stroke, stroke, stroke. Ah, uh, can't you guys pump any faster? We're gonna be late for the teacher athlon. Almost there, Ralphie. Just a little more air. I could use some air, too. Of course you could, Arnold. That's what happens when you hustle those muscles. <sighs> That's why your lungs are part of the team. Team? What team? If you ask me, there's only one team around here. Janet! Me and Mr. Sinew. Say hello to your competition, the original phys ed teacher extraordinaire. <gasps> 
Hello, Miss Frizzle. Nice to see you, Mr. Sinew. May the fittest teacher win. My, oh my, you must ruin a lot of shirts that way. You bet. Come on, Mr. Sinew. Let's jog easy back to school and... Oh, well, <laughs> it's hard to keep those big muscles down. How is Miss Frizzle ever going to beat that... that mountain of muscle? You know, class, there's more to winning than muscles. Muscles are just part of the team. What team, Miss Frizzle? It's one-on-one. -on -one. You against that... the Hulk. We'll just see about that. <laughs> Hello, Walkerville! Welcome to the final round of this year's Teacher Athlon between Ms. Valerie Frizzle yeah! Yeah! and Mr. Garth Sinew! Yeah! 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 <clears throat> Thank you, Janet. We got the message. Now, the teacher who wins two out of the three events takes home the prestigious, totally bodacious Athlete Trophy. Okay, it's time for the first event of the Teacher Athlon. The row, row, row your boat to the end of the lake. First one there wins event. It's time, Miss Frizzle. Good luck. Good luck to you too, Mr. Sinew. Teachers, to your boats! Sinew rules! Up with the frizz! Uh, um, can you give me a hand here, Mr. Sinew? Certainly. Whoa! Did you see that? Something tells me we could be in trouble. Teachers ready? Get set. Row! Go, Miss Frizzle! Row! Stroke! 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 We're winning! <laughs> what was that? <laughs> here comes Ralphie. <laughs> oh no, what are we gonna do? Uh, uh, Miss Frizzle, look! It's an Artie Arodius! Really? Where? <laughs> Boo! Did you say something? Oh, just hold your breath. Whatever you say, Ralphie. <gasps> Sorry, Miss Frizzle. Someone's gotta win, and it's gonna be me! Bye-bye! Come on! Mr. Garth Sinew! Oh, no! What happened, Miss Frizzle? You were winning! Oh, well, for some reason, oh, my muscles gave out. <laughs> oh, excuse me. But we were doing just fine until you got the hiccups and held your breath. Well, that's the problem. Everyone, except Coach Ralphie, knows you can't row if you're holding your breath. Why not? What's breathing got to do with how your muscles work? Oh, now there's an erudite question. <laughs> attention, attention competitors. Five minutes till the next event. Five minutes. Oh, to the bus. To the bus? Single file, please. Do we really have time for this? It's okay, Ralphie. We all need a little breather. Hit it, Liz. <gasps> what is that? This is the Supreme Team Analyzer manifesting internal networks automatically, or stamina for short. That is so cool! Wow, I see inside your heart, Miss Frizzle. You don't miss a beat, do you, Tim? The red liquid must be your blood flowing. But what are these big sacs next to the heart? Oh, those are my lungs. First stop on the Air Express. Air Express? What is she talking about? Look, Miss Fizzle's blood goes from the heart to the lungs, and then back to the heart, and then to everywhere. The heart pumps the blood twice. Forget the blood. It's her muscles I want to know about. That's what she needs to win the teacher athlon. Muscles are certainly part of the team, so let's go out on a limb. Oh, look at those leg muscles. They look good and strong to me. So, what does holding your breath have to do with how your muscles work? Ralphie, I think you need a closer look. Oh, no. Tell me 
she didn't say that. Attention, attention all competitors. Event number two is about to begin. Mr. Sinyu and Ms. Frizzle, please report to the starting line in three minutes. Uh, I'll take my closer look another time, Ms. Frizzle. Ralphie's right. We have to get back to the track. <gasps> Not to worry, Arnold. You have lots of time to find out what air and muscles have to do with each other. We do? Oh, yes, and you're coming with me, Tim. This way, please. Let us know what you find out. Is it just me, or are we going on a field trip? Come on, bus. Do your stuff. Where'd the bus go? It's right in the palm of my hand. Okay, class. Time to take chances, make mistakes, get messy, and breathe deep. Miss Frizzle, where are we going? In there, with the air. Hit it, Liz! This is typical. The next event is about to start any minute, and what are we doing? We're driving into Miss Frizzle's nose! Air, oh, air, has my little class gone? Attention, 145 seconds to event number two. Get your popcorn now. Oh, better warm up. One and two. Hey, you guys, can you hear me? We hear you. What is going on? We're getting ready to start. Where are you? We're right here. We're just entering Miss Frizzle's left lung. Then step on it. Excuse me? I mean, hurry! We're in Miss Frizzle's lungs? Yeah, you're being Frizzle big time. So all this noise we're hearing must be the sound of her breathing air. But these tubes are getting smaller and smaller. Oh, no, we're not gonna fit! <sighs> but why now? How am I gonna culture the victory from inside her lungs? Way to go, Lev! Incredible. I always wondered what Miss Frizzle was like deep down inside. Time's up. We win. She'll be back. Well, I I'm gonna complain. I'm good at that. Well, I guess everybody's good at something. Meeting, meeting. Where are you guys? Janet's gonna disqualify us. Have you guys figured out what breathing has to do with muscles yet? Working on it. We're following the air as she breathes it through her lungs. Who knew your lungs were made up of so many tiny sacs? <laughs> Looks like the air stops here. Now what do we do? <sighs> well, as my Uncle Ether always says, when you hit the ground, take a look around. Well, the air is still moving as she breathes, but where's it going? Wait a sec. This looks familiar. Kind of like when we were in your bloodstream, Ralphie. Remember? You mean when you followed my blood cells all around my body? What's that got to do with air? Plenty, Ralphie. Watch. When the air hits the purple blood cells, they suck it up and they turn bright red. <gasps> Look, it happens when she breathes in. I guess the air doesn't stop here after all. But where does it go from here? We've got to check this out. Follow that air. Nice one, Liz. We're in the bloodstream. But where is it taking us? What's that noise? Oh, you're getting to the heart of the matter now, class. We're going right into her heart. Now what? I don't know. The heart is a pump. Get ready to get squeezed out of here. And one and two. Attention, Miss Frizzle. If you're not at the starting line in one minute, you're disqualified. Go away, Janet. Did she say disqualified? This way, Tim. And they're off. Mr. Sinew, he's our guy. He's gonna win easy as pie. I'm 
gonna win! I've got the muscles! But I've got the heart and the lungs! Sure feels good to be back in the bloodstream, huh, Ralphie? But Miss Frizzle's blood is flowing a lot faster than yours did, Ralphie. Well, what do you want? I was resting, not racing against the Credible Hulk. They're at the halfway point. No telling who's gonna win this one. I've got the edge. <sighs> but I've got the team. We're moving farther and farther down her leg. Yeah, but where are the muscles? I think we need to hang a left. What are all those red bands out there? According to my research, that is the muscle fiber. Muscle fiber? Stop the bus! Hey, look at that! The red blood cells are giving that white stuff to the muscles. And then turning back to purple. I gotta go check this out. It's almost as if the muscles are breathing in the white stuff. And breathing out the dark stuff. Phoebe, that's it! Those red blood cells are bringing air to the muscles. Hey, guys, I got it. Air has oxygen. That must be what the white stuff is. Oh. According to my research, oxygen is the part of the air our bodies use to live. So, the lungs breathe in air. The blood cells carry the oxygen. The heart pumps the blood to our muscles, which use the oxygen. So that's the team Miss Frizzle's been talking about. Lungs, blood, heart, and muscles. They're all working together. They're the oxygen team. They work together to pull oxygen into the body, pump it into the muscles, use the oxygen up, and carry away the used up stuff. What a team! So when Miss Frizzle held her breath, her muscles didn't get the oxygen they needed. She didn't have a muscle problem. She had an oxygen problem! I'm going to win! Not if I get there first! <sighs> Ralphie, I think maybe you better come look at this. This doesn't look too good to me. Man, that gray stuff's showing up all over. And there's less oxygen going into the muscles. I think we've got another oxygen problem here. Hello, Tim. We can't keep up this pace. The muscles aren't getting all the oxygen they need. It's going to be really close. <laughs> You're good, Miss Frizzle, but not as good as me. <laughs> not as good <sighs> as I, Mr. Sinew. <sighs> And the winner is Miss Frizzle! The score is even. One event apiece. She did it! Miss Frizzle won the race! Uh, whoa. Oh. Oops! I th think I'm going to fall down. Are you all right, Miss Frizzle? Oh, I'm, I must have overdone it a little. My muscles need a few minutes to recover. <sighs> I'm sorry, but you don't have a few minutes. Do you give up? No way! Get better quick, Miss Frizzle. I'd hate to win this way. But if that's the hand you're dealt... Janet! What's going on in there, you guys? Without enough oxygen, Miss Frizzle's leg muscles stop working. They're as limp as overdone spaghetti. But there's no sauce. Just this yucky ooze. Oh, excellent observation, class. That yucky ooze is lactic acid. It's what muscles make when they have to work without enough oxygen. That's what happens when you take your team to the wall. Ah, oh, but not to worry. With enough time to rest, my blood will clear out the waste, bring in more oxygen, and I'll be ready to go again. Yes, to worry. The next event is about to start. I know. Oh, this is working out better than I thought. So here's the story. This yucky ooze tells us her muscles don't have enough oxygen, but there's no time for her blood to do the job. So we've got to get more oxygen to her muscles now. We'll have to go back up to the lungs to get some. There's not enough time. And we've got to clean this ooze up too. <laughs> Great idea, Liz. Let's get 
morphing. Virus is disappearing. But now what? Her muscles still need oxygen. I know. We need to get more oxygen to these muscles. And fast. We need new air. I've got it. The bus tires have new air. We pumped it in there, remember? We can use that. All right, guys, let him blow. It's working! The muscles are starting to move again. How's your leg, Miss Frizzle? Tell everyone my muscle feels as good as new. Now my heart, lungs, and blood will do the rest. Mission accomplished, guys. The team's back in shape. You can come out now. Let's go. I gotta see the look on Janet's face when Miss Frizzle wins that trophy. With the contestants tied, one win each, the winner of the tire step backstroke stair climb event will be the winner of this year's Teacher Athlon. Come on, Mr. Sinew. 233, 234, 235. Miss Frizzle, you're looking great. You guys in the windpipe yet? Are you kidding? We're still going up her leg. You're still going up her leg? Don't you guys want to see this race? You know, Tim, when this is over, you better take a long vacation. I think you've lost it. Attention, attention! This is the moment you've all been waiting for. The final event, the tie-breaking, the trophy-winning, the... Teachers, are you ready? <laughs> on your mark, get set, go! The race is on! They're off and stepping! Go! Swim! Close, Miss Frizzle, but no cigar. Uh, don't you know that smoking is bad for your health? It's anybody's race! They're stride for stride! Go me! Go! Go team! Go! Hang on, gang. We're in the lungs again and we're almost out. Come on, Miss Frizzle. Take chances, get messy, and get us out of here! We're almost out! There's her vocal cords! It's really close. The winner of this year's Teacher Athlon is... Miss Frizzle! puny little teacher win against my muscle man. Well, Janet, he was up against an entire team. Miss Frizzle's lungs took in oxygen. Then her blood carried it. Her heart pumped the blood. To her muscles, which used the oxygen to do the work. And then, of course, there was us. We were on the team, too. Whoa, whoa, you're a good champion, Valerie. Next time, I'll train harder. Oh, well, there'll be no next time for me, Garth. I'm retiring. As I always say, air today, gone tomorrow. <laughs> and the same goes for your shirts. <laughs> to do more aerobics to keep my lungs, heart, muscles in tip-top shape. Hello, Magic School Bus? Oh, no. This is Mr. Sinew. Okay, you'll do. So how does exercise get you in shape anyway? Well, it helps your lung tissue stretch further so you can take in more air. And it strengthens all your muscles, including your heart. That's the most important muscle in your body, you know. I guess I'd better get exercising. Good idea. Bye. Now what? So, I know that white stuff was 
Oxygen. But what was that dark stuff? The dark stuff was carbon dioxide that the muscles give off. The blood carries it back to the lungs where we breathe it out. Carbon dioxide is the second half of the breathing story, but we didn't have time to show it all. Can you really see all that stuff the way you showed? No, oxygen carbon dioxide are invisible gases and lactic acid is a colorless liquid. Red blood cells turn bright red when oxygen joins the cells, and they turn purple when oxygen leaves the cells. Oh. Hey, are you okay? Never felt better. Thanks. Bye. Whew. Not rowing. I'm with Janet. How could someone like Miss Frizzle beat a mountain of muscle like Mr. Sinew? Having big muscles doesn't necessarily mean you're in good shape. What's important is teamwork. Your heart and lungs have to work together to deliver as much oxygen to the muscles as possible. That's right. And blood carries food as well as oxygen, doesn't it? That it does. Oh, bye. That's it, Liz. I've got to rest. Aren't you tired? You've got some kind of heart, lung, blood, and muscle team, Liz. And the same kind of shirts as me. <laughs> Come on in and don't be shy. Just to make your day complete, you might get baked into a pie on the magic school bus. Step inside, it's a wild ride. Come on, ride on the magic school bus. Major funding for the magic school bus is provided by the National Science Foundation, supporting education and research in science, mathematics, and technology. And Microsoft supports the Magic School Bus and other programs that further learning, exploration, and discovery. Additional funding is provided by U.S. Department of Energy and Carnegie Corporation of New York. And by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and the annual financial support of viewers like you. Visit your local library and read more about science in the Magic School Bus and other science books. Seatbelts, everyone! Please let this be a normal field trip. With a friend? No way! Cruising on down Main Street, you're relaxed and feeling good. Next thing that you know, you see it. in the neighborhood. Surfing on the sine wave, swinging through the stars. Yeah. Take a left at your intestine. Pick your second right past Mars on the magic school bus. Navigator, nostril. Climb on the magic school bus. Make a plane turn to. Take that. On the magic school bus. Drop the river of love. On the magic school bus. Such a fine thing to do. Ah. So strap your bones right to the sea. Come on in and don't be shy. Come on. Just to make your day complete. You might get baked into a pile on the magic school bus. Step inside, it's a wild ride. Come on, ride on the magic school bus. Live from Walkerville Civic Arena in beautiful downtown Walkerville, it's the 10th Annual International Show and Tell Competition. Watch as youngsters from every nation in the world match wits and knowledge for the grand prize, the Stanley Cup of Show and Telldom. The I Showed It To You and Told You All About It Cup. Are you ready, DA? Of course I'm ready. I've researched this topic up and down. When Arnold shows up with his rare prize pumice collection, I'll tell about it in a way that'll knock the judges' loafers off. Um, speaking of Arnold, where is he? The show's about to start. 
This year, several gabillion new viewers have joined us via satellite, making today's event the most watched show and tell extravaganza in history. Are you ready out there? Ready! Then let's get rolling. First up, from East Lothian, Scotland, Tom and Ella. Let's give them a warm Walkerville welcome. You guys are going to thank me for life. What do you mean? And where's your rock collection? At home. <gasps> Don't worry. The contest is in the bag. This bag. <gasps> you didn't bring your rock collection. Nope. Better. I brought this. Is it great or what? Um, uh, sure, only what is it? I don't know, I'm just a show part. T.A. is the tell part. Well, um, according to my research, it's, um... Oh, how am I supposed to know? I've never seen one before. You haven't? I've spent the last two weeks digging up amusing rock anecdotes. I don't have a clue what this thing is. What do we do now? We send Arnold home to get us rocks. We don't have time. <laughs> You're just in time, Miss Frizzle. Arnold brought this for show and tell, and nobody knows what it is. Is that so? Well, as my nephew Conrad always says, when in doubt, figure it out. So, what do we know? Absolutely nothing. Not exactly. I know that I found this in our attic in a big trunk that used to belong to my great aunt Joan. That wouldn't be by any chance Arizona Joan. The famous archaeologist? That's the one. When I was little, she'd tell me stories about how she searched for things that were left behind by people a long time ago. And how she'd try to figure out how people lived based on the stuff she found. According to my mom, Arizona Jones' entire life was a voyage of discovery. Did she ever tell you what this is? What? I don't think she ever figured it out. All she left was a trunk full of stuff and this journal about her adventures. Let me see that, Arnold. Maybe there are some clues in here. Absolutely, Dorothy Ann. Because when you think like an archaeologist, clues are news. To the bus! Wait, if you're talking about a field trip, we can't go now. What about the show? We're about to go on. Arnold, there is no show unless I can tell everybody what your Aunt Joan found. To the bus! And hurry! Hold down the fort, Arnold. We'll be right back. Here, Arnold, this two-way show and television will show you where we are and tell you what we're doing. Ah, uh, see you soon. Maybe my rock shouldn't have stayed home today. So, how do we figure out what this thing is if the people who use it aren't around to tell us? Archaeologists call something like this an artifact. So an artifact is anything made by people who lived a long time ago? Oh, exactly, Tim. An artifact gives us clues as to how those people live their lives. Well, someone made that thing for a reason, right? And once we figure out that reason, we'll know what it is. So what are we supposed to do? Guess? You got it, Ralphie. That's what scientists do. They put clues together and make a guess. And they call that guess a hypothesis. Hypothesis! Then let me put a few clues together. It's made of wood, and it's pretty strong. Could be some sort of a shield. Maybe a war thing. Sounds like a hypothesis to me, Ralphie. I don't know. I think it looks more like a net. Another hypothesis. Okay, okay. So we have two good guesses. Now what do we do? Stand back! Whoa, look! Nothing happened! The bus didn't change! Follow me! Welcome to the Supposatron, the ultimate guest tester. Now, the first thing any archaeologist worth her hat will do is make a copy of the artifact. <laughs> this one we test. 
while the original goes back to Arnold so he can keep it safe. As my cousin Digby used to say, damage an artifact and you throw away the key. Now, let's start with what we know. Well, there's some stuff we know for sure. According to Arizona Jones Journal, the artifact was definitely made a long time ago. Okay. A long time ago. Do we know anything about the place this might have come from? It says here she found it 14 miles northwest of Fort Walkerville. Fort Walkerville? That's just outside of town. Okay, we're making progress. From what we know, what can we suppose? Well, we know the roundy thing is made of wood, so I suppose there must have been trees there. And there had to be people. Somebody made that thing. Arizona Joan writes about hunters and farmers. Coming right up. So maybe they sometimes fought over land. So how do we find out if Ralphie's guess is right or not? Good question, DA. Shall we? Shall we what? Whoa! What's oh! happening? I think we're being frizzled. Wahoo! What happened? Where are we? It's not where, Carlos. It's what if. The Supposatron took what we knew, added our guesses, and created a what if world. You mean this is Ralphie's hypothesis? Come to life? Whoa! Look! There's the tribal people we supposed! And they don't look too happy to see us. We programmed them for a skirmish, remember? Better get your shield ready, Ralphie, to test that hypothesis. I hate to be the voice of doubt here, but how exactly does it work? Run for cover! We're under attack! I just thought of something, DA. What's that, Ralphie? If I hold the webbing like this and use this part as a shield... We're doomed! and welcome back. Wow, what a contest! And what amazing contenders for this year's Show and Tell title. Where are those guys? Liz! What are you doing? This is a genuine historical artifact, not a toy! Let's get out of here! Man, that was close. After rigorous testing of Ralphie's hypothesis, we've decided this who probably wasn't a war thing after all. And if it was, I bet you the guy who made it only lived to use it once. Attention, class! Come in, class! You guys know what time it is? We go on stage any minute now! We're working on it, but we can tell you it's not a war thing. Hey! Arizona Joan wrote something in here about finding evidence of bark canoes near where she found the help. Hey, wait a minute. Canoes mean water, and water means fish. Look at this webbing. It's just made for grabbing and scooping things. I guessed it was a net, so now I say it's a fish net. A catchy supposition, Tim. Let's test that hypothesis. Come on, class! Let's make a splash! Let's go! This river's filled with fish! Too bad you can't catch one! Patience, Wanda. Fishing is an art. So is tightrope walking, but we don't have time to learn it. We need to know what the thing is now! I don't get it. The big fish just avoid the hoop, and the little ones swim right through the webbing. I'm starting to think this wasn't a fishing net. Oh, look, class rapids. We seem to be having a bit of a theme going at this year's contest. I can't believe this is happening. I go on in 10 minutes, and they're out fishing! Hey, quit playing! This is serious business! Well, it definitely wasn't a fishing net. And it wasn't 
any good at paddling through those rapids, either. When you think about it, why would they give it all these beautiful colors if they were just gonna stick it in the water? So, based on that observation, Keisha, what would you say it is? Hmm... Why, a head, of course. Look how nicely it's decorated. It says here that Joan found shells and beads that people used to decorate their clothing. Maybe they had special ceremonies. Let's suppose it was a hat used as part of a dance celebration. Let's send that idea up the flagpole. So, let's suppose we have some dancers. Bada-beam, bada-boom, a few drums. Remember Joan wrote that the people were farmers? So let's suppose it's a harvest ceremony. A good idea. So we'll have some fields, some corn, mm, a little bit of nighttime. Celebrations oh, are so much more fun at night. Now let's rock and roll. Doesn't that music just make you want to dance? Whoops! Um, does anyone have some tape? I don't think they had tape back then, Keisha. Weird. There's no way to keep this hat on. No bands, no ties, no straps. You're right. And there are no marks on the rim to show where they could have been. Looks like my hypothesis is history, Ms. Frizzle. Maybe so, Keisha. But I bet my bottom buttons there are more hypotheses where that one came from. Wow, what a show, folks, what a show. And if you thought that last challenger was something, get a load of these kids. Come on, you guys, I'm getting mad. Can't you just pick up a pumpkin and get back here? <gasps> That's it, Liz. If I catch you playing with this priceless artifact one more time, it's no chocolate-covered ants for a week. Now, what the heck is this thing? You're on in five, kid. I know, I know! Okay, so far we only know what it's not. It's not a shield, not a fishing net, and not a hat. Too bad we don't have any more clues. Arnold! Come in, Arnold! DA, what's taking you so long? Is there anything else you can tell us? We need more info before we can come up with another hypothesis. I told you all I know! What about the bag? Was there anything else in there? Sure, lots of stuff. My baby pictures, my booties, my chewed up pacifier. Hey, wait a second. There's these arrows. Where'd you get those? They were in the back with the hoop. You'd think arrows would mean it was a war thing, but we already proved it isn't. The ends of the arrows aren't very sharp. And look, they're decorated just like the hoop. Which means they must go together. But how? Think, DA. Theorize. Guesstimate. Suppose. Let's see. Arrows passing through the hoop. Miss Frizzle, I need one of those arrows. I have a hypothesis to test. Please, oh, please get back in time. Please, oh, please don't make me go on by myself. DA! Oh, what a relief. Here. Thanks, Arnold. You're leaving me alone again! Okay, all you gazillions around the world. Join me now in welcoming the contestant from our very own Walkerville Elementary School. <laughs> oh, no! Please, oh, please let this be a dream. Please let this be a dream. Uh, once again, our contestants from Walkerville Elementary. Uh, hello? Anybody here from Walkerville Elementary? Go for it, son. Thanks. Um, hi. Of those people we made up. A crowd of them. Yes! 
Now let's suppose there's a great big clearing. Way to go, Miss Frizzle! Come on, guys! Let's test this baby! Wow! Live from what will someday be Walkerville Civic Arena, the annual international and very important Hoops and Arrows competition. What are you talking about? Don't you guys get it? Look at the edges of this hoop! It's kind of beat up and worn. Kind of like it's been rolling on the ground, right? Now look how the arrows in the hoop have the same colors. In the same order! Yeah, you're right! So what do you have in your house that's round, different colors, and goes with something pointy? We have this round portrait of my Uncle Ed, and his head's kind of pointy and... A dartboard! Round, bright colors, and you throw darts at it to score points! Exactly! And what's an arrow but another kind of dart? So, maybe this is a game! And maybe you have to get the arrow through the holes! Makes sense to me! I mean, people long ago needed to have fun too! Just like us! All right! Let's play Hoops and Arrows! Ahem. <clears throat> um, this is... This is... An artifact. Something left over from a long time ago. And from objects like this, we can figure out how people used to live their lives. If you know how to read the clues. Imagine, hundreds of years ago, that you're a noble warrior, defending your family and friends against bitter enemies. You're willing to risk your life for your loved ones and your people. And this protective mask, this... Ooh. Well, it would actually be kind of useless, wouldn't it? Because the arrows could go right through the holes and into your... Never mind. Oh. Um, instead, imagine you're paddling along Crystal River, carefully watching the rich bounty swimming under your canoe. You sweep the water gently, confidently. Then you realize you better get a pedal that doesn't leak. Hello, hoops and arrow fans. Welcome to the event of the century. Wow, this game is great. You think we're good enough to compete? We're about to find out! Imagine you're at an important ceremony. The fire roars, the drummers pound, the dancers sway, and then... What? Yeah, you... You wonder why you brought this, because there's no way to keep it on your head when you're dancing. Aww. Sorry. Be right back. Of course. That's it. Ladies and gentlemen, what you are about to hear will truly amaze you. The purpose of this simple hoop has puzzled archaeologists for ages, as well as my class for the last half hour. Turns out to be something every kid is an expert at. A game! The object of the game was probably to get this arrow through the hoop. And if you got the arrow through the center, you'd get more points than if you got it through this open space near the rim. And how do we know all this? How? Well, nobody does for sure. You see, it's only a hypothesis. But the things left behind by people long ago like this hoop, give us clues about how they lived. And it's up to archaeologists like us to fit the clues together. Right, Aunt Joan? Too bad Arnold's not here to see this. Arnold! We better get back and tell him what we learned before it's too late! Thank you, thank you, thank you, and thank you! Oh, yes! 
I'm proud to present to you the most coveted prize of this competition, the official best performance by a team who originally didn't look like they knew what they were doing, but somehow came through at the last second award. I just want to say that this award doesn't belong to me alone. It belongs to all my classmates at Walker Elementary. Hey, you're back! You guys, we won! Arnold, how did you figure out what that was without us? Well, you told me what it wasn't, and I always knew what it was. A prize winner. I just didn't know what prize it would win. <laughs> School bus? Is this the magic school bus? Magic school bus. 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 Magic I guessed it right away. You did? Well, you must be smart. We thought the hoop thingy was pretty clever, but I suppose you can't fool everybody. That's true. But tell me something. Are all archaeologists great adventurers like Arizona Joan? Archaeologists go to a lot of exciting places, but once they get there, they have lots of work to do. Digging just one artifact out of the ground can take days or even weeks. That's because they have to be very careful to label every little thing so they know exactly which part of the dig it came from. Too bad real archaeologists can't have something like that Supposatron. Well, actually, archaeologists think the way the Supposatron works. They can look at the area where the artifact was found and suppose what people had to do to live there. Or they might find a painting or sculpture or writings that show how the people who lived there looked or worked. They use all sorts of clues to form a picture of how old something is or how it was used and why. I think finding artifacts and learning about how people lived long ago is really cool. Can I do some digging too? Uh, better not. Until you're an archaeologist. When people just dig something up, all the information about where things were found and what they were found with is lost forever. So if you do find something that may be old, stop. Don't dig. Find an archaeologist and tell her. That way, we'll all learn more about the past. Thanks for the tip. By the way, I dig your show. See ya. <laughs> Cute kid. You know, I love what I do. Hey, Liz, you find anything? Well, what do you know, Liz? That's amazing. Hey, that's mine. My brother buried it as a joke. <laughs> Thanks for finding it. Vroom. <laughs> Surfing on the sound wave, swinging through the stars. Yeah. Take a left at your intestine. Pick your second right, grab more on the magic, magic school bus. Navigate an ostrich. Climb on the magic school bus. Make a plane turn two. Take that. On our magic school bus. Rock the river of love. On the magic school bus. Such a fine thing. So strap your bones right to the seat. Come on in and don't be shy. Just to make your day complete. You might get baked into a pie on the magic school bus. Step inside, it's a wild ride. Come on, ride on the magic school bus. Major funding for the magic school bus is provided by the National Science Foundation, supporting education and research in science, mathematics, and technology. And Microsoft supports the Magic School Bus and other programs that further learning, exploration, and discovery. Additional funding is provided by U.S. Department of Energy and Carnegie Corporation of New York. And by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and the annual financial support of viewers like you. Visit your local library and read more about science in the Magic School Bus and other science books.